Hi. Continuing with the paper flowers we made, um, I just wanted to keep going. Um, I have made quite a few, but I've also discovered some other little tricks of how to make them slightly different. And I think when in combination, they'll be even better. So we started off with these little flat ones. Well, actually, I think we started off more or less with these ones, um, which were just layers and layers of tissue paper. And then I smeared the um, papier mache clay, air dried clay onto it, let it dry, and I put resin on so that they became quite hard. So they're, they're nice and delicate and strong, if you, delicate looking but actually quite strong. And, and then I got a pyrography tool and I scored into it with it and it kind of burnt off bits and that was rather exciting. And then I resined that as well. So that's also, you can't hear it, it's hard anyway, it's just a little bit delicate. And then some of them I, actually what I did was I cut down the side and then I pushed one side under the other to create a little cone and that's a little different variation which is also rather nice. Now what I wanted to show you is a little way to make them curved but more flower-like. Uh, when I'm making papier-mâché bowls one of my favourite ways to do it is on a balloon because I think balloons just have the perfect shape rather than doing it inside of a bowl or outside of a bowl. Sometimes the inside look quite good, but the outside very often have the rim, which doesn't look good on the inside. So I collect these old terracotta flower pots and what I tend to do is get a piece of thread. I will blow up my balloon and then put it in that end first and tape or tie this to the leg of the table, tape it to the pot. So you've got that nice curve there. But also, equally, on this side, I could always cut off that and just use some masking tape and tape it down. And then that creates a beautiful shape as well. So um, I've got different sizes of pots, little teeny weeny ones as well. And you can do them in other things. They don't have to be flower pots. And so for the flowers, what I'm doing, um, I've got a well, a jam jar would do, but I happen to have a wine glass as well, a champagne thing, I think it is. So you can pop the the glass into there, see? And then I would cover it with a piece of cling film, just like that. Cling film, or you could use aluminium foil. Then what I would do is take the tissue paper and fold it up sort of like that and then cut it out into a into a circle ish circle ish pva glue with um water added to it that's quite useful then paint on here not too much but enough is quite a lot actually and take these little discs of tissue paper one at a time and just smooth them over like that so they crinkle and they're rather nice and then just put a little bit more paper glue there another piece of paper tissue paper or I've also got a roll of Japanese rice paper just because I think there's such a subtlety when you're working with white and translucency and opacity. I just like to play around with those qualities. And then maybe add Japanese glass beads that are white or see-through. Do you know, I didn't put any glue on that one. You can really tell. The other way you can do it, of course, is to just put the glue on the paper, like that, and then plonk it on the top. But whatever comes to hand and whatever is easy. So I put maybe, you know, six, seven, eight, nine on and then I leave it to dry. I'll plop, plop that there and show you one I made earlier, which is this one. But what I've done here, I've already um, on the piece, I wanted to I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm trying to kind of take this as my starting point. It's a kind of Edwardian little pin made of a, a gilt metal and it's got eight little blingy 
diamonds in and five little petals and a big diamond in the middle and I'm thinking of making it into a brooch version of papier-mâché and instead of diamonds I'm going to use small versions of the iridescent beads. Oh, they all went through the bottom. Anyhow, so, <laughs> circle, imagine that's dried um, and it's curved. So what you would do is you would just, I'll do it on this one, you just cut five sections all the way, you know, so you've got five petals, six, seven, eight, nine, as many as you want. And then I just cut into almost the centre and then just trim each one around. So it's more a petal shape. It's quite nice, isn't it? So uh, that's another version. This one was done with the air-dried papier-mâché clay, just rolling it into a little ball. I think I might dispense with that now. Oops. And pressing it onto... I always work on an old tile, a ceramic tile or a piece of glass. It's really easy. Then sort of make a, a rough circle like that. And then again, you can cut into it into one, two, three, four, five cuts. That's right. And then just trim off the ends as you go around, sort of clockwise. Can you see? Like that. And just continue until you've got it like that. And then um, onto. Well, onto a balloon, you could do it easily do it onto a balloon actually, because it's got a nice curved surface. You would then put your piece of clay just on a curved edge and let it dry out. Maybe that's not quite curved enough, in which case you can use a good old little light bulb or an egg or anything that's curved and round. Actually, when you want something curved and round, it's really hard to think of. But I mean, you know, ball of wool with a piece of baco foil, aluminium foil, or cling film wrapped around it with, with a tennis ball, a golf ball, a marble. Well, <laughs> off you go. I also like to play around with mod rock as well. So you could do exactly the same thing in mod rock. And another trick is to do it straight onto the tile. So you would take your glue and just sort of put that onto there and then stick your discs one on top of the other like that and leave them to dry. And then when they're dry, do the same thing, cut them out. Um, you can add the mod rock in little ways, kind of 1960s ways. Um, there's all sorts of references that can be made back to different fashion trends in different decades um, and decide where you're going to go with that. Now what else can I show you? I think that's actually about it for this video because the idea is just to make a whole series of different types of um, paper flowers and coat them with Mod Podge or more PVA glue or varnish or resin or whatever you choose. I like to use resin but it is a bit complicated. There is a video somewhere on the list of different videos. Um, just experiment and find out what suits you best. And when you've got enough of the flowers made and you can make little buds and all sorts of things, we can think in terms of maybe making um, a collar out of fabric and attaching them to it together with beads and all the other things you're making. Or maybe a sort of brochy corsage or bracelet attachment or even a bouquet for a bride or just for your bedroom dressing table or window or a present. Anyhow, you know, the ideas will just come rushing in once you start getting going. So I hope to catch up with you on the next video. Okay, bye.